Hi, it's Mr. Wasman, and today we are looking at uh, U.S. Traditional Subtraction. This is a lesson in our math journal on page 21. We're in Unit 1, Lesson 9. So let's jump right in. Let's take a look at these instructions. Make an estimate. Write a number model to show your thinking. Try to solve each problem using the U.S. Traditional Subtraction. Compare your answer with your estimate to see whether your answer makes sense. Now, I am going to highlight that last bit of instructions, that last sentence. Compare your answer with your estimate to see whether your answer makes sense. Now, that's going to come in handy when we get to the actual problem, okay? But let's estimate first, okay? So, I'm going to round each of these numbers, 58 and 39, to the nearest 10, so 58 rounded to the nearest 10 is going to be 60. So I'll put that right there. 39 rounded to the nearest 10 would be 40. Both of these numbers round up to the next group of 10s. So then when I subtract 60 minus 40, I'm left with an answer of 20. So that's my first job right there. I estimated about how big my answer should be. Now. This is where it gets a little tricky. Uh, most of you have probably uh, mastered uh, traditional addition. It kind of makes sense. It's straightforward. When I have too many ones in one category, they spill over into tens. I group them into tens. But when we're dealing with subtraction, especially when we have to borrow or regroup from another place value, it gets a little tricky because, you know what, our brains try to uh, convince us to do something that is easier but not necessarily right. Here's what I mean. 58 minus 39. And this is something I see a lot of when I'm working with kids. They will look at this problem and they'll subtract 8 minus 9 equals 1, 5 minus 3 equals 2. Oh, my answer is 21. Now, on paper, that sort of looks like it makes sense. But here's what's really happening. They look at the 8 and then they look at the 9, and they think to themselves, well, 9 is bigger than 8. How can I subtract that from 8? Uh, and what happens is their brains do a flip-flop. They will take that 9, and they will transpose it in their minds. They don't even realize they're doing it. They will subtract 9 minus 8. They will look at that 9 and think, that's the bigger number. i got to take the smaller number from it. Okay? 9 minus 8 is 1, and then 5 minus 3 is 2. So I get this kind of answer from kids all the time because it's a, it's a symbolic error. They look at the numbers and they don't realize that that 8 in the top uh, part of the column isn't big enough. You have to borrow. So what does that mean? So when I look at 58 minus 39, I realize that 8 isn't big enough, so I have to do some... Uh, borrowing. I got to regroup from another place value. So let's just draw a big old X through this and try it again. 8 minus 9. It's not big enough. So what I have to do is I have to borrow a group of 10s, making my 5 10s into 4 10s. And then I'm going to change my 10 that I borrowed into 1s, add it to uh, my eight ones, and that gives me 18 ones. Off to the side, if I write four tens, 40, and add 18 to it, 18 ones, that gives me 58. 40 plus 18 is just another way of thinking of 58, and that's useful when I'm subtracting and regrouping. 18 minus 9 is 9, 4 minus 3 is 1. So my actual answer for this problem is not 21, it's 19. Now, for this example right here, both of these uh, answers are close to my estimate. 19 rounds up to 20, 21 rounds down to 20. So that makes it kind of tricky. So why, why isn't the first attempt that I didn't read, why isn't that working? Okay, or how do I know when my estimate is so close to my actual answer. Well, let's jump down to this next problem, shall we? 
Problem number three states 600 minus 379. So again, I'm going to create an estimate for my answer. Now, 600, oh my gosh, you don't have to do anything there. I already know that it's going to round to 600, so I do nothing. And then 379 rounded to the nearest 100 uh, would round up to 400 because 350 is the halfway mark. So 600 minus 400, 6 minus 4, gives me 2. Drop down the zeros, it's 200. Very similar to the problem above. That's not a coincidence. The math, uh, the authors of this uh, math uh, activity probably did that on purpose. Now, here's where uh, our knowledge of regrouping starts to help us and why estimation is such a cool tool. Okay, so if I try to subtract 600 minus 379 for real, and again, if I don't have a firm understanding of regrouping, I would look at 0 minus 9, and your brain wants to make things easier, so you might accidentally transpose the 9 and the 0 and subtract 9 minus 0 instead of 0 minus 9. This happens a lot when it comes to zeros in a subtraction problem. So kids will say 9 minus 0 is 9, 7 minus 0 is 7, and then 6 minus 3 is 3. So they come up with an answer of 379. Now again, that kind of, sort of, looks like it makes sense. But when we compare it to our estimate, it's way off. 600 minus 400 gives us 200. How can I have an actual answer of 379 if my estimate says it should just be around 200? Well, here's how we do it. 600 minus 379. So 0 means nothing. There is no loose ones in that category. So again, I have to take my 1s and i got to break down a 10 so I can have some 1s to subtract. But the problem is there are no 10s loose there. I just have six groups of 100. So what I need to do is I need to change up one of the hundreds into tens. So 600 minus 100 gives me 500. So I have five hundreds, and then I take my ten tens, which is my sixth group of 100, and put in the tens place value. But now I got to get some ones. So I got to, again, take away one group of 10, leaving me nine tens, and now I give those 10 ones to the ones place value. Because again, 500 plus nine tens plus 10 ones will give you 600. This is another way of thinking of 600. Okay, so all I've done here is I've uh, changed up my 600 to represent 500, 9 tens, and 10 ones, so I can subtract a little bit better. Okay? 10 minus 9 leaves me with 1. 9 minus 7 leaves me with 2. And then 5 minus 3 also gives me 2. So my answer for this problem is 221, not 379. So as you can see, my estimation uh, is a lot closer to this answer than the this answer, which was way off. And that's because we didn't regroup correctly. Okay? So it may seem like the whole estimation piece where you're being asked to uh, round first, come up with an answer, and then solve again for the s a second time seems like uh, more work than it's worth. But in instances like this, where you see how off your actual answer is, uh, that's, that saves you some time and, and possibly helps uh, improve your score. So when you are subtracting, you need to make sure that you are remembering to regroup in each place value. Okay. Now, if you're having a hard time with regrouping or you still have questions about that, this is when you reach out to your math teacher. If I'm your math teacher, you reach out to me. If you're watching this video and someone else is your math teacher, you uh, send them an email hold up your hand in class, 
or uh, do what you got to do to uh, get them to help you figure out this regrouping piece because it's a, it's a bit of a, a bear when it comes to uh, subtraction, okay? But you can do it. It's just a skill, just like anything else, and all skills can be learned. So like I said, if you have questions, reach out. Otherwise, we will talk again soon, friends. Thanks.